so let's talk about the effects of heat energy there can be many effects of heat energy but here i have listed only few which were like very important and the first one being the expansion so let's move on and here what do we have is we have uh, a cylinder you can consider a cylinder to be hollow or to be rigid it doesn't matter because the expansions are almost similar so this is our original cylinder and we are supposed to heat this particular cylinder right and what happens is the length of this cylinder was l the area of the cross sectional area was capital a and the entire volume was v that is equal to area multiplied by the length now when you heat it what happens is the expansion takes place in all the three volume area and length and the new length becomes l dash and l dash is larger than l right and uh, this is for extra this is not for i mean 8th and 9th graders those of you who are in 11th standards might recall this equation this change in the length or the increase in the length or the final length l dash that is equal to original length 1 plus alpha delta t where delta t is the rise in the temperature alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion but for for those of you who are in eighth grades this expression is not for you people and finally the area the new area also increases let's call that as a dash where a dash is again greater than a and again a dash is equal to a 1 plus beta delta t delta t is increase in the temperature beta is coefficient of superficial uh, um, expansion or aerial expansion area also increases and again this is not for 8th graders and the final volume v dash would be equal to a dash multiplied by l dash now since both these area and the length have increased so the final volume will also increase and it would be larger than the initial volume the final volume can be written as v dash is equal to v 1 plus gamma delta t delta t is increase in the temperature this is coefficient of volumetric expansion right and so what happens is when you heat a substance the photographic magnification takes place you just have to zoom in this substance photograph so it becomes like this length area and volume altogether three expands here we have a state change example where what happens is the ice which is kept at say for example this is 0 degree this uh, thermometer is recording the temperature 0 degree and when you heat the ice from the bottom what happens is the entire heat energy is used to increase the distance between the two atoms of the ice and not to rise the temperature so whenever state changes the temperature does not rise and this is called the melting process so this is melting this is boiling here liquid changes into gaseous state whereas the water boiling takes place at 100 degree temperature at a constant pressure so here the water when you heat it from the bottom if it is at 100 degree will remain 100 degree the temperature will not change but the liquid starts vaporizing and converting into gaseous state here the solid changes into liquid the temperature does not change this is melting point this is boiling point now here we have a typical example of temperature rise temperature rise and state change will not accompany together remember if there is a temperature rise state change will not take place if state change change if the state is changing temperature rise will not take place suppose we have a block of copper at say 50 degrees celsius and you start heating it from the bottom so whatever heat energy which you give is used to increase the speed of the or vibrational motion of the atoms or molecules inside so the temperature will start rising but the state will not change so here is another application of the heat energy the next one is the work done so here we have a very good picture from wikipedia thank you for that and uh, what happens over here is let's run the animation so we can see that the heat energy which we are giving is used to convert into work or is used to run the wheel this is the wheel 
this is the piston which is moving up and down and we are filling a gas inside it and we are continuously supplying the heat energy say for example q this heat energy or suppose delta q this heat energy is used to increase the temperature and expansion of the gas as well as the gas expands and it pushes the piston apart pushes the piston in the forward direction and finally the wheel also turns so here the heat energy is converted into work right but 100% of the heat energy will never convert into work it is impossible this is the law of thermodynamics only some percentage of heat can be converted into work so delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w where this is work this is internal energy or rise in temperature or expansion whatever you call it and this is the heat energy so heat energy fully does not convert into work if that happens we will have 100 percent efficient engines which is impossible to make because some amount of heat always uh, goes apart in form of friction or whatever we do so 100% heat cannot be converted into work done right and the next one is the chemical reaction so the fifth one is chemical reaction so if we suppose if we have a piece of calcium carbonate uh, calcium carbonate is also called limestone it is CaCO3 and if I start hitting it from the bottom what happens is the calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide that is called quick lime plus we get carbon dioxide gas. So this is typically an example of a chemical reaction it is a decomposition reaction right when we heat uh, carbonates they decompose into carbon dioxide but not all carbonates they decompose into carbon dioxide. Um, so the uh, this is an effect of heat energy that causes chemical reaction this is quick climate. So in, in short we have discussed about the effects of heat energy and now we will be discussing about the uh, different modes of heat transfers.